My name is Jerry Cohen. I'm the president of Carnegie Mellon. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you here to this important announcement and very exciting symposium. This symposium is the first of a series of events this weekend where we'll mark what I think will go down in our history as an extraordinary moment. Carnegie Mellon's history has been punctuated with key milestones. Moments when we've made major new bets or moved in important new strategic directions made possible by our brilliant faculty and the vision and generosity of key supporters. Supporters who have recognized that this university's distinctive strengths position us to take on the major challenges of the time. Such was the case in the establishment of the first degree granting school of drama, the first school of design, the founding of GSIA, now the Tupper School, the creation of the Department of Computer Science, the founding of what was called SUPA, which we now know as the Heinz College. Each of these, in their creation, changed their parts of the world in fundamental and permanent ways. And so it is today, as we announce a major new institute devoted to one of the biggest challenges we have ever faced, the need for safe, reliable, sustainable, and affordable energy. I firmly believe that the effort we're commencing today will join the other great milestones in this university's history. The problem is that important, and our potential for attacking it is that great. Solving our energy problems will require technological innovation, and Carnegie Mellon will contribute to this by mobilizing the expertise of our outstanding engineering departments, as well as our strengths in computing, architecture, design, and beyond. In fact, we've already made some very important contributions by creating better batteries, designing more efficient houses and offices, developing a smarter electric grid, and deepening our understanding of how shale gas development affects our water resources. But at CMU, we know that technological innovation is only part of the answer and part of the problem. Energy decisions unfold in political, regulatory, environmental, and behavioral contexts, and we need economic, organizational, and policy solutions as much as we need new technology. This is an interdisciplinary challenge of the first order, and Carnegie Mellon simply does this cross-disciplinary collaboration better than any other institution that I know. And we're in a position to make an impact on such a vitally important problem as this. It's an opportunity that goes beyond just that. I view it as an obligation for Carnegie Mellon. None of the important milestones in this university's life has happened suddenly or overnight. They are the result of years of planning and development. In this case, one can't point to a single point in time when we started on the path that brings us here today. But the strategic planning exercise, more than a decade ago, represents such an important moment that put us on this path. That strategic planning effort, led by trustees Lowell Steinbrenner and the late Bob Dunlap, and involving several faculty in this room today, identified energy and environment as, crucial, as a crucial set of issues to which Carnegie Mellon could make important contributions. In 2004, Lowell and his wife Jan made a generous gift to create the Steinbrenner Institute, which provided crucial resources and an institutional focus for our efforts. In 2008, we revised our strategic plan for the university, and in doing so, reaffirmed and underscored the priority of energy for this university something we then turned our attention to in both identifying specific themes we should pursue and to secure the resources we needed to expand and strengthen our efforts. Today, 
we're prepared to make a very significant step forward thanks to another couple, Sherman and Joyce Bowie Scott, both graduates of Carnegie Mellon. They met at Carnegie Mellon as undergraduates. It's a wonderful story. Longtime friends of the university, generous supporters of the Engineering College and the College of Fine Arts. And Joyce is a university trustee. Sherman and Joyce also recognize the urgency of the energy challenges that we face. And they share our conviction about this university's potential for impact. Their thoughtful engagement and significant financial commitment encourage us to move forward rapidly on our plans. And they bring us here today. In honor of the Scots' leadership and generosity, I am very pleased to formally announce the formation of a new university-wide institute, the Wilton E. Scott Institute for Energy Innovation, named at Joyce and Sherman's request in honor of Sherman's late father. I'd like Scotty Sherman Scott to stand so we can thank him and Joyce for their wonderful support. Deeply grateful for your support, Sherman and Joyce's, for allowing the kind of interdisciplinary research and education that's going to happen here because of what you have made possible. In addition, their contribution has allowed us to move forward in the building of a new building where state of the art labs will be located and will allow our faculty and students to work on developing new materials and processes in energy and in other fields as well. We'll be ceremonial, uh, having a groundbreaking ceremony for that building tomorrow, a building that will be known as Sherman and Joyce Bowie Scott Hall. That uh, facility will also contain a large nanofabrication lab and we'll be able finally to move the BME department back to campus. While the Wilton E. Scott Institute is new and will allow us to do some really exciting and wonderful things by expanding our programs, the university already is very active in energy, in energy research. And we thought it was especially appropriate for us to begin this celebratory weekend with a sample of the impact our faculty and our students are already having. 